Hello, welcome back. In today's module, we're going to talk about uh, buying a car and also financing a car with auto loans. We're going to show you and introduce you to different resources that you can research car information. Uh, most importantly, we need to understand the total cost of owning a car, not just the car payment. And we're going to evaluate different options to pay for a car. Uh, we'll go over a couple of examples and you'll get a chance to learn step by step how to calculate your own car payments. Uh, we'll look at a lease versus buying as option and also uh, show you how to develop a strategy to shop for a car uh, using all the tools that you learn in personal finance. Let's get started. Before we start looking at cars, let's take a look at the uh, total cost of ownership. Uh, a lot of times when people think about buying a car, they focus on the financing cost. So how much is the car payment? But your operating cost is just as important. So operating costs include gas, uh, man routine maintenance. So those include tires, brakes, oil change, and so forth. Another very high cost that people oftentimes don't take into account until they are at the car dealership closing on the car is insurance. Insurance costs are very expensive and don't always assume that a cheaper car has lower insurance. Uh, the last category is dependability. Uh, and there are two sides to this. Uh, first is the direct cost of repairing your car. And then the other is if you miss work or school, uh, the opportunity cost can be very high. So when you're shopping for a car, make sure that you take into account not just the financing cost, but also the operating cost, insurance, and also how dependent your car is. Uh, there are actually quite a bit of resources online, uh, car review, um, and a website like Edmunds and KKB, KKB actually stands for Kelly Blue Book. Uh, these are actually really good resources for understanding the dependability of a car as well as the operating cost. Once you know the true total cost of owning a car, then you can determine whether or not you can afford the car. And you already have a head start on this because you have a budget. So use your budget. And once again, be sure to, re to include the insurance costs as well as routine maintenance. Another thing to take into account is how much would adding a car loan affect your debt to income ratio? Uh, would it still be within the 35%? Uh, and if that is uh, too high, what changes can you make so that you stay within a acceptable debt to income ratio and afford the car that you want? Another uh, important thing about uh, shop before you shop for a car is to find out what interest rate it will be. Uh, so you can find out your credit score ahead of time. You can do some shopping around, find out what the car loan interest is at your local bank and credit union. If you are new to finance as a young person or not have a whole lot of credit history, you may want to consider having a co-signer for a car loan or a lease. Uh, if your credit score is already pretty good, then you may be able to qualify for a lower interest rate. However, pay in, keep in mind that the co-signer will take on the risk of paying the loan if you default. So a co-signer is someone who take on a lot of risk on your behalf. Uh, finally, if you already have a car right now, you may want to look into how much is your car worth as a trade-in. Uh, you can figure out what your approximate resale value is for your car. Uh, a good resource is, will include the consumer report. Uh, once again, Edmunds and KKP, those are good websites to look at, uh, to look at um, how much your car is worth. Which way should you go? Should you buy a new car or a used car? Uh, there are a lot of debate out there. Uh, so let's take a look at the pros and cons of each one. The advantage of buying a new car is that you can get the newest feature, but more importantly, you get much better warranty. And you also have the chance to customize the car that you uh, by adding features that you like or awarding features that you don't want to pay for. The biggest uh, advantage sometimes for buying a new car is that occasionally the car, uh, car manufacturers offer special financing on new car that's not available on used car. 
Uh, the downside of buying a new car, the first is expense. Uh, it's typically more expensive to buy a new car than a used car. And if you are in uh, a lot of states, they actually have sales tax on new cars. So that is an additional expense on top of the uh, uh, cost of the car. And a new car, the first couple of years will depreciate at a much faster rate. The biggest advantage of buying a used car is that it's oftentimes cheaper. Again, that's not always the case. Sometimes the used car market can be uh, abnormal and it can turn out to be not that much cheaper than a new car. So always look at the current market condition. In general, used car depreciate at a much slower rate uh, compared to a new car, particularly in the first few years. Uh, the downside of buying a used car is that it usually does come, doesn't come with a lot of warranty. Uh, there are some certified Brion car which has better warranty, uh, but they are also not as cheap. So the trade-off is there is always uh, the risk of buying a car that uh, had potential problems versus a, uh, uh, a lower cost. So if you buy a used car, since it's already get a few miles on it, you will have to pay repair much sooner than a new car, new car. And it's harder to do research on a used car because you don't know the specific history on that one particular car. And it may take you longer to find the right car for you. So the trade-off between uh, the advantages and disadvantages of a new car and a used car depends a lot on your personal circumstances as well as the current market condition. We talk about new car uh, warranties. Um, so for new cars, the warranties are given by the manufacturer and each manufacturer and actually specific model vary in terms of how long the warranty is good for, uh, mo um, mileage and the parts they cover. Uh, so usually the warranty covers the basic parts against defects, uh, the power train, this means the engine, the transmission and the drivetrain. And the last one is corrosion. In the past, uh, rust is a serious problem. For used car, uh, it's actually uh, regulated by the FTC, uh, the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, they require used car dealers to uh, use a, a um, standardized sticker. So um, most states have something called an implied warranty of merchantability, meaning that you guarantee that the car will run uh, at least when you take it off the lot. A lot of car uh, dealers offer a uh, surface contract or extended warranty contract. Uh, whether or not these contracts are worthwhile depends on your own unique situation. However, a lot of these contracts, uh, they will claim that they, can, they, put, they cover a lot of repair, but when something does break down, you may find that they actually have a lot of special circumstances where the warranty does not pay for the specific repair. Uh, whether or not they're worthwhile depends on your own situation. However, a recent res uh, survey by Consumer Report find that 55%, uh, so more than half of owners who purchased this warranty did not use it at all. And on average, those who do use it still spend hundreds more for the coverage than they save in the repair cost. Now that you are ready to find your new car or new used car, uh, how, do, how do you plan to pay for it? Well, most of us will not have the option to pay for a car in cash. Uh, so a lot of us will end up having to get, get some kind of financing. Uh, the most common one is a car loan. Uh, a good idea is to get pre-approval from a lender, uh, particularly if you're a member of a bank or a credit union. Uh, this is particularly true with used car because there's no seldom special financing offer on used car. If you're buying a new car, you should compare the interest rate from your credit union versus what the manufacturer is offering. Uh, by if you're buying a used car, by getting the financing from your local union, uh, credit union, you can negotiate better uh, because you're not grouping both the financing and the purchase decision together. Uh, for a used car, bank and credit union usually have better rates than the car dealer. Again, the exception is when a manufacturer is offering uh, a special interest rate. That is different from a car dealer who is offering the financing.
Another option uh, to buy a car is to lease it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about leasing versus buying in a minute, but in general, leasing has less flexibility than car loan and is usually offered by the manufacturer. A third, a fourth type of financing uh, is a type of car dealer called buy here, pay here. This type of car dealer, the financing charges are built into part of your payment. So it's really difficult to comparison shop. So you, you either pay cash or you pay, use their, their financing. You, the, what will, what, how can you tell this is a buy here, pay here car dealer? They oftentimes will advertise no credit, no problem. And there are many, many fine prints come along with the contract. Uh, the rule of thumb is that buy here, pay here car dealers financing is much, much more expensive than traditional car loans. Here are some factors that you want to take into account when you're shopping for a car loan. Uh, so there are a lot of features and also add-ons. So the first thing to t look at is the APR or annual interest rate. Uh, so we already mentioned this. Try to get pre-approval by your bank or credit union. Uh, and when you're buying a new car, check into the special financing. So APR is just one factor. The other factor is the length of the loan. Uh, longer loans, may be a, you may be able to lower your monthly payment, but you end up paying longer. And a longer loan can also lead to an upside down situation, meaning that your loan is actually greater than what the car is worth. And that can be a potential problem. Let's say you, you have a car that's in an upside down situation and you get into an accident. So you have insurance on your car, so the insurance will pay for the lost value of the car. But your loan amount is greater than the value of the car. So after the insurance pay off, you are still on the hook for the amount that the insurance did not cover. Because you're in an upside down situation in that particular case, you'll end up having to pay money if your car was total and insurance pay for the value of the car. So be very careful about taking out a loan that is substantially longer than the expected life of your car. Another thing to look out for are prepayment penalties. Uh, Always look for loans that has no prepayment penalty. They'll give you the option to refinance if interest rate is going down or if you want to sell the car early. There are sometimes there are add-ons that they try to sell you as part of the loan. Watch out for those. Um, one is credit insurance. Credit insurance is uh, insurance just in case you lose your job or you're unable to make payment, then uh, the insurance will pay for the car loan. The other is a gap insurance. Remember we talked about the upside down situation. So this is if you have gap insurance, then the get you will cover what your insurance will pay and the loan amount. The reason you want to watch out for this add-on is because if you have a reasonable credit score, uh, you would not need the credit insurance. And if your car, again, is a reasonable term, uh, you and the car price and the loan is um, consistent with each other, you will not need gap insurance. Uh, gap insurance comes into play if you, your loan term is substantially longer than the expected life of your car or that the car value, the loan value is substantially higher higher than the value of the car. Both, both of these are red flags to watch out for in terms of the dealer that you're working with. Now let's take a look at a specific example on both the impact of a ter or the term of a loan on the payment as well as how, can we, how may we get into an upside down situation. So let's say you're looking at a car that is worth $25,000 and you plan to put down $5,000 in down payment, so you take out a loan for $20,000. You can use a four-year loan, so it's 6% and for four years. The monthly payment is $469.70 per month. And we assume that the value of the car after two years is $12,500. After two years, your payment, 
your loan payment, the loan amount is $10,598. So your equity in this card is $1,900. Instead of a four-year loan, you can take out a six-year loan. If you take out, and in this example, we're going to simplify it and assume that the interest rate is the same as 6%. The only difference is now you have six years to pay off. Because you have six years to pay off the loan, the payment went down actually quite a bit to $331.46. So your monthly payment is $130, $140 less per month. That's quite significant. The same car after two years is worth $12,500. But because you have six years to pay off the loan, uh, you're borrowing $20,000 in both cases. Now your outstanding balance is $14,000. And that's because you're paying off less per month. Now your loan amount is greater than the value of the car. So you have a negative equity of $1,600. So this is what we call an upside down situation. So even if you sell the car or if your car get into an accident and your insurance pay you $12,500 for the value of the car, you still end up owing the bank $1,614. So that's what we mean by upside down. So that's obviously a situation you don't want to get yourself into. Now there's a lot of numbers in here. Uh, we won't go. We will pause the video here. When we come back, we're gonna go over specifically how do you determine the monthly payment on a car on your own. See you soon.